Hey, what's up, guys? The Royal Recruits Evolution has rushed its way into the arena. After cycling one set of regular Royal Recruits, the next Royal Recruits will be evolved, giving them an extra 11% health and 12% more damage. But by far the biggest benefit is the ability. As soon as their shield is lost, they lose their mind and start to charge. And like a charging prince, the charge does double the damage. The rank 14 player in the world is wrecking everyone with this recruit stack. The best evolved Royal Recruits deck in the game is with Royal Hogs. With constant split lane pushes from the pigs and recruits, your opponents will crumble under the pressure. Especially with three spells to remove your opponent's distractions so your charging recruits and flying machine can always find damage. It's time to charge into some games with our evolved royalty and assert dominance. Thanks to everyone that's using Critical Sir Tag to make all the daily videos possible. Hey, this guy finished 24 in the world. Okay, Clash Shroud, we have a little bit of a challenge on our hands right now. And you know what? We're gonna go for the pure skill play of dropping recruits in the back first play. 99% of the time, it's actually pretty good against good players. But if you play against people that bridge spam at the very start of the match, it's not gonna work out. You're gonna get spammed by e barbs so the recruits don't get in front of the tower. You're gonna be like, disappointment. But in this type of environment where your opponent doesn't bridge spam all their elixir at the start, or at least waits a little bit, the recruits will get in front and you'll cycle to the evolved recruits a little bit faster, giving you a huge benefit. So because this guy's running 2.6 Hog Rider, it might be tough if he plays it perfectly. So I want to just catapult some piggies at him and then get away with the Barber on top of the Musketeer and time it so we don't take any damage. Wait, wait, wait. The Musketeer went and targeted the pigs instead. I don't love that. That was not it. That was not it. It literally stopped. Right before, it was about to get rolled by the bar barrel and get hit by my tower. So it messed up the timing of the bar barrel. Seriously, I guess that was well played or maybe I just didn't play well. But that's not a fun moment from that musketeer. Trolled me. Anyway, we're going to go for our zappies in the back and then we can go for recruits at the river. A lot of times the recruits, whenever they get logged, they'll start charging like a prince. It's hilarious when the opponent has to figure out a way to deal with it. So we could fireball on the cannon and also the musketeer if he decides to drop in a different spot. Otherwise, I think it's better for me to go for a fly machine and just apply more pressure because we don't think he's going to fireball that, right? It's, it's just unlikely. He has to deal with the recruits on the right-hand side, and they're going to start charging on the tower. Look at that disastrous damage. Rank 24 player in the world is already having his tower's tank. That's what I love to see. This game wasn't even close. Even when he got the muskets here on the tower and had a pretty decent start, we're still finessing him right now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I love the emote, too. That definitely encapsulates how he feels. Yeah, he's dead. I mean, we've got his left-hand tower at 500, and we got two basically full HP towers. Hey, so it looks like we're going to snag two towers to zero for our opponent. And if you guys didn't know, you can fully counter a hog rider with a goblin cage. I showed that right as we cut away, but look at that placement. Memorize that, and you'll be destroying 2.6 hog riders. Let's go. This guy finished 496 in the world. Alpha go. Moo yahoo. I don't even know what that is, but I feel like that's some type of war cry. Ah! That's a war face! Now let me see your war face! Moo yahoo. And I'm ready to go to battle, bro. I'm gonna go for my zappies in the back, and he is literally not cycling a single thing, so I don't think it was a war cry. I think it was just an exclamation of excitement or something. Do we decide to go in for a bar barrel? Do we... It's so weird dropping a bar barrel, hitting skeletons, and not even extending far enough to hit the tombstone. I bet you he's running a Lava Hound deck. Whenever I see someone with Barbarians and Tombstone, it screams Lava Hound at me. So I really can't afford to cycle my Fly Machine. That card has to perpetually stay in my hand because we don't know if he's going to end up dropping a Balloon. I would hand him a win then. So, okay, yeah, Fly Machine, definitely a Lava Hound deck. Top 500 player with a lot of anti-air responses to me. You know what we can do is we can go in for a Rail Recruits really far back, so the Inferno Dragon locks onto that, and then we can gradually... Slowly but surely, find decent responses here. Like, we can go for our Zappies to finally finish off the Fly Machine, and then also start to stockpile some damage on the Skeleton Dragon, and then maybe get some counter push in both sides. I don't know. I'm going to troll him a little bit. I'm going to go for a Barbro with the Zappy, so then the Barbarian's going to get extra damage. Usually, it only gets one hit on the tower, but I think it gets two. It should get another one because the Zappy, right? Nice. And then it does a little bit more damage with the Zappy just, like, poking him, prodding him. A little, little bit of annoyance factor there. Just looking at that card, no one, no one's happy, right? No one wants to see that hitting their tower. Okay, we can go for arrows, or I, I think we can fly machine. Which is slightly more risky of an endeavor, but that's the way that we want to roll when we have momentum rolling in our favor. So, I think I can go Royal Hogs on the other side. We know he's going to have Barbarians, he's going to have the Evolution, so that's not as good for us. Let's just arrows on top of the Tombstone, and then also the Inferno Dragon. That's going to be our best bet. He Lava Hounds relatively quickly. I can go in for a goblin cage, and then I can go in for probably zappies on this. This is really dumb if he decides to go in for a balloon. That would be good for us. Uh, if It's really dumb for my department because I'm not necessarily able to predict a balloon because he hasn't shown it yet. 
<laughs> oh, come on, man. Don't do this to me right now. Have a heart, man. All right, cool. We can go for arrows on top of all the lava pups, finish them off, and then have the fly machine work away on his fly machine. The bad thing about this is that every single time I try to go in for like these royal hogs pushes, we know he's going to go barbarians and then drop a tombstone. Maybe I can keep the fly machine alive. Maybe it can skedaddle and lock onto the tower. I'm just hoping for anything here. All right. We're going to go for recruits, but after we split up our zappies. Oh, 1,000 HP. That's pretty funny. I didn't expect it to be like that. All right. We're going to go for our cage, and then we can go in for our royal recruits and just spam endlessly right now. Because we know that if we have an entire football squadron of royal recruits, he might not be able to stop them that well. Oh, it locked onto the tower and bypassed. His air cards damaged it down just long enough to give me value. That's pretty cool. All right, we're to arrows. They'll be able to clean up all the lava pups. And then I can go in through with our royal hogs, I think. Yeah, I think that's going to be our play. I just continue to spam them and split them, though. Yeah, it's likely the best bet because I don't want him to go for barbarians. He drops barbs on the left. I'm sad, sir. He always has to go in for barbs, but if he does, then he's going to get some serious trouble. We're able to fireball him out and walk away with a win against a Lava Hound deck that was just floating everywhere in the match, but never able to figure out a solid offense against us. When you've got Zappies, Fly Machine, Arrows, and Fireball, your anti-air answers are off the charts. And you'll sit there watching in enjoyment as the Lava Hound floats off into extinction. Let's go! This guy finished 756 in the world and he's got a Mother Witch banner. Time to triumph against the Triumph Clan. So if I go for Zappies in the back first play, it's pretty good because we have Fly Machine for adequate air answers. And we can go for Royal Recruits if he decides to spam us. I mean, I'm going to go Royal Recruits regardless. Let's be honest, guys. I am a Royal Recruit degenerate that legitimately spams it at every opportunity right now because that's what the evolutions do. They make you want to spam it because then you get addicted to getting that value and you're like, I can't stop. It's too strong. The Royal Recruits that charge are really broken. Okay, we're to go in for a goblin cage here. I don't necessarily know if it's the smartest decision, but I'm hoping that we can just go and kill the hog rider. And I was hoping that it would also activate king tower, but the firecracker stopped far enough away that it didn't give him the king tower activation. All right, well, we can maybe go in for royal hogs. We're probably going to get blasted by a bomb tower. So if I do that, I want to go in for royal hogs and I want to go for fly machine at the exact same moment. Most people don't necessarily do this, but... When I know that my opponent doesn't have a great deck that's equipped to deal with the fly machine, that's how I'm going to play. Locks onto the tower, loads up some damage, makes me feel pretty comfy about myself. Uh, okay, we're in arrows. I mean, if you want to give me that amount of value, who am I to say no to that? Thank you, man. He even says thanks back. I love when you control a top like ladder player and make them a little bit tilted mentally because now a good player is questioning his own decisions. And now he's going to get inside his mental and he's going to be super tough on himself. Most of the people that are great at games are generally people that are perfectionists and they want to improve every small attribute of their game. And that's what's probably happening to this guy right now. We're going to go for a Goblin Cage and we can go for Royal Hogs in the right. I think that that's going to be a good play. Oh, he's got Cannon instead of Bomb Tower. That's really cool. Because now we can start to drop our Royal Hogs way more presently on the map. And I think they're going to give us some presents. Like, look at the Zappies resetting the tower multiple times so we can stockpile more and more damage. I'm going to go for a Barb Barrel here. I don't know if that's the right play. Maybe I should have fireballed as well. But the Zappies are permanently stuck on the tower. I don't even know how long they lived, but that must have been a while. <laughs> I was talking about the Hog Rider, and I think the Zappies outlived the Hog. Kind of cool. Anyway, we know he's going to end up having a Firecracker, so he could drop it at the river. He decides to. Yeah, I was thinking about dropping a Fly Machine preemptively because it was going to snipe the building anyway. Kind of messed that up. Wait, can they charge? Oh, look at that. The Rail Recruits just charged in the Firecracker and finished it off. That's so funny. Wait, range cards are not safe. Range cards are never safe from this deck. The Ray Recruit is still going in. This is ridiculous. This doesn't feel fair. It feels like we're cheating the game or something. All right, we just need to defend, and then we can fireball them out and win the game. So I wonder if we can go Royal Recruits. The spammer. They jumped over the log, too. Is there nothing they can't do? These recruits are built different right now. Even when they're not evolved, they still feel superheroes. <laughs> Superheroes, let's go. <laughs> GG and well played. That was a super fun game, and we're gonna bounce on the next one. No top ladder player is safe from the evolved recruit spam. We got a game against Connor. We're dropping our rail recruits in the back because we see a goblin giant. And no matter if we have to travel through winter, summer, whatever the season, I think these rail recruits will have a good reason to break through our opponent. Because if you look at this deck, there's no way that he's gonna have multiple answers that aren't gonna get countered by spells. I mean, you could end up having like a mini P.E.K.K.A for maybe like the Royal Hogs. But yeah, he's, he's going to have the Mini Pekka. It's going to be out of cycle though. So that's going to be one of our best things. If we can get the Mini Pekka out of cycle. Oh, that's not good. 
That's annoying. That knight is not going to die for a while. And now I think I have to spend extra elixir with a, a barbro. Typically, the mini packet would just get fully countered by the zappies. I need that mini packet to stay in the distance of both towers. Oh my gosh, thank goodness. It didn't get the shot. I thought it was going to do two tower hits there, to be honest. Guy's got a fireball with mini packet and sparky, so not going to be an easy match. Every time that you match into Sparky, you want to use your rail recruits on defense on your side of the map. So then they just don't charge into the blast for no reason. So it's one of those matchups that your cards do counter their Sparky, but only on one side of the arena. All right, what do we do? I guess we go Fly Machine in the back and then maybe like Fireball if he decides to go in for a Mother Witch or something like that. But yeah, if he cycles Sparky, he's going to have to drop something in front. Probably a Goblin Giant a little bit further ahead than he would want. So generally what we do is we go in for our Goblin Cage and then the Goblin Cage will pull the Goblin Giant. And then the goblins attract each other. Usually opposites attract, but that's not how it works here. The opposite of the recruits versus the sparky, though. That's uh, the fatal attraction of the sparky. <laughs> not what she wants to see ever. So we're going to get the recruits down. Hopefully they are able to do a lot of extra damage after they lose their shield. They should be able to charge everywhere. And yeah, we're in a good spot. The recruits are starting to charge up. I bet you he goes in for a mini P.E.K.K.A. If he doesn't, I'd be very surprised. I could go for a fireball just to hit the mini packet and the knight. Oh, I did hit the mini packet too. Let's go. I predicted that, guys. And then the recruit's going to end up hitting the tower for a lot more damage. Then we can go in for Royal Hogs. Even though he's fireball and it's fine, they still deal upwards of 300 damage. And it took him a while to fireball, so it's going to do even more. He's at 500 HP now. The fly machine, we can expect him to go in for minions on top of that. Maybe we can make a prediction. You know what? I'm feeling really frisky right now. I feel like we can hit the prediction on top of the minions. I'm gonna pre arrows on the minions in two seconds. Oh, that was so bad. <laughs> Y'all didn't see anything, all right? He definitely did not just goblin giant in the face of us. All right, it's okay. We're gonna fireball. We're gonna treat that as our minions prediction. We, we ended up getting an amazing trade. No worries. We go for rail hogs here, and then the Sparky's gonna hit one little piggy. <laughs> I trolled him with the pig so hard there. I think that was beautiful. Making sure that the piggy got stuck on top of the sparky and he only hit one of them while the three other ones mutilated the tower. That was one of the best piggy placements I've ever done in my life and I will treasure that for eternity. You guys let me know down below in the comment section if you thought that was going to work out as well as it did. I was hoping it would and the piggy plan actually panned out as perfectly as possible. Hey, this guy's got the sad royal ghost banner and we're going to make him slightly more sad. So I want to go for the royal recruits at the start, but this guy's not even giving me the opportunity. Actually, I can create my own opportunity because I do have arrows. I will be able to clean up the skeletons from the skeleton barrel. It's interesting for someone to be running skeleton barrel in the meta. Usually that means it's going to be paired with a lot of either Mega Knight bait or sometimes rail recruits bait. But the guy's got Ice Golem. So I have no clue what I've matched into right now. <laughs> I love predicting my opponents, but this guy, he's going to be utterly unpredictable. He's going to have Log, Fast Cycle, Firecracker, Skeleton Barrel. So I need to save my Bar Barrel. That's going to be the most effective answer to the Skeleton Barrel. And once he starts to get a lot of damage on my tower, it's definitely going to be a bit better for me to go in for the Goblin Cage. Oh, that's so bad for me. Oh no, that is the one card I didn't want to face. So if we're playing into someone with Bomb Tower... Our best bet is to bait out the bomb tower with the first rail recruits and then power through utilizing our hoggies to get all the damage. We've got to hog the damage. So the hogs into the bomb tower is never really a good play because it's going to be a negative one trade every time. At least the recruits, when they charge, they can break through the bomb tower. Or maybe you'll have like fly machine or some other cards to snipe the, the bomb tower. That's how we like to play mostly. So yeah, this is the push that we were looking for. If he goes in for a bomb tower, it's not extraordinarily scary. Oh, he's going to click the monk ability. But genuinely, I don't think that's a good play logging on the recruits. You just galvanized them. You made them angry, bro. <laughs> you hurt yourself by logging my cards. I just don't understand how that's so good. It feels illegal to have that happen. But I'll take it. We're going to go for Royal Hogs again in the right because he doesn't have the bomb tower. Remember, I was planning about this. I was talking to you guys. I was thinking out loud and saying... No bomb tower, that's where we hog the damage. And it wouldn't have worked if we had went for the Royal Hogs first, because you're never going to get a good trade. I can also maybe activate King Tower with the Barbro against this Firecracker. Did it come down fast enough? No, I'm a failure! <laughs> it takes so long to roll. I don't like that, man. I don't roll with you, Barbro. You're out of my team. You're out of my squad. Okay, do we just BM him with a Fireball and the Monk and see if it clicks the ability afterward? I, I kind of want to make him click the ability and just troll him a little bit. Just to mess with his mental because I got messed with because I missed the firecracker. I feel like I'm a very sadistic sir right now. Anyway, we're going to go in for a fly machine and get him to click the monk ability eventually. There it is. Totally fine. I don't care. Now I can finally drop my bar barrel and not care about the monk man. That's good. We're also going to be able to finish off the firecracker. We're going to set up the bar barrel. We're not going to miss it this time. And then we're going to go for rail hogs. 
So the cool thing about this is whenever they go in for the bomb tower, you know that you're still going to get value with your arrows on top of their firecracker or whatever bait cards that they got. So don't get too stressed out, you know? Also, the fireball plus arrows will be able to finish off the tower, so all I have to do is not be stupid and hold the door. Is that possible? I think so. All right, so we're going to drop the fireball in the far back. <laughs> we know he's going to try to click the monk ability. Is he able to stop us from going in for arrows? I don't think so. No, he used his monk ability. Thank goodness. I was like, all right, cool. We're chilling. And we can overshoot the monk, go flying over his head, and watch as the tower is dead. I still find it hilarious how the evolved royal recruit secured the win early on as soon as our opponent logged them once. Not often do you see your opponent spend elixir to lose the game, but his elixir investment is what secured our success. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an amazing rest of your day.